the young Oklahoma City Thunder team have gone above and beyond in the 2023-24 regular season so far, thanks to the individual and collective brilliance of multiple young Thunder players. Although Shea is the main man at OKC, the 2022 NBA Draft has produced multiple integral parts of the OKC core, including second pick Chet Holmgren. However, someone who's been an underappreciated piece is 12th pick Jalen Williams. In his sophomore season, Williams has become the second highest scorer on one of the best teams in the West, who's also a great two-way player and not unfamiliar to delivering in the clutch. And although he is now seen as a standout of the draft class, how come 11 players were selected before him, and how have their NBA careers gone so far, almost two years later? Welcome to Sportsphere. Let's get into it. Selected with the first overall pick by the Orlando Magic, it wouldn't be long until Paolo Banquero would start to impress, after coming out of Duke. Banquero showed ability as a good player on both ends of the floor, especially offensively, and although having some typical rookie tendencies early, he showed a smooth jumper, three-level scoring ability, and good overall skill set. And despite being on a poor Magic team, Banquero was one of the bright spots for the team, ending the season with averages of 20 points, 7 rebounds, and almost 4 assists on just over 42% from the field. Now, in his second season, he has progressed much further, now leading a Magic team to a much improved record in the East. He's averaging career highs in all categories, with 23 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists, on 46% from the field and 36% from 3. He's proved to be worthy of the first overall pick thus far, and it'll be intriguing to see if he can continue to progress to find some playoff success when he gets a few more years in the league. With the second pick of the draft, coming out of Gonzaga, the OKC Thunder selected the 7'1", Chet Holmgren, and although he would miss the entire 2022-23 season due to an injury, his season that followed made up for his absence in a big way. In his first NBA season this year, outside of Wembenyama, he's been the best rookie in the league, currently sitting at 4th spot in blocks per game in the NBA, with 2.6, while scoring over 17 points per game and almost 8 boards and 3 assists, on over 54% from the field and 40% from 3. But more importantly, playing an integral role in the OKC Thunder's quick rise to one of the top spots in the Western Conference. Alongside SGA and Jalen Williams, the trio have built great culture and synergy at OKC. That being said, their biggest test is still on the way, as they will see themselves in the playoffs for the first time with their exciting new lineup. As for the third pick, the Houston Rockets selected Jabari Smith Jr. coming out of Auburn. And although some inconsistencies early, Jabari would still show flashes of brilliance. His rookie year saw him on a rebuilding young Rockets team, averaging 13 points and 7 rebounds for the season, on nearly 41% from the field and 31% from three. This season, Smith Jr. has improved on all fronts, and although he has improved scoring only slightly, he has much improved efficiency, shooting 45% from the field and almost 36% from three. He's also averaging over 13 points per game and nearly nine rebounds. And although there may have been more promising picks in hindsight, I'm sure the Rockets wouldn't be too upset with this pickup. While with the fourth pick, the Sacramento Kings would pick up Keegan Murray, who was seen as a top shooter of the draft. And this quickly proved to be true. Murray also fit into the Sacramento Kings very well, playing a catch-and-shoot role alongside great passers on his team like Sabonis and Fox. In his rookie year, Murray averaged over 12 points and 4.6 rebounds per game, shooting 45% from the field and over 41% from three on over six attempts from deep per game. Very impressive for a rookie. In this season, Murray impressively scored 12 threes in a single game, becoming the seventh player in NBA history to do so also being the youngest ever player to reach this feat. That being said, this season, Murray has seen a drop in three-point shooting percentage, going for under 37% from deep, although his points per game has gone to over 15. However, he has improved rebounding numbers to over five, with almost two assists and one steal. The following player to be selected in the draft, Jaden Ivey would be picked up by the Detroit Pistons and would show some great signs of a talented scorer. In his rookie year, he averaged over 16 points per game, on a respectable near 42% from the field, and 34% from deep, also with 5 assists and 4 boards. 
That said, the Pistons were one of the worst teams in the league, and this saw him receive less minutes in his second season. However, Ivy is now again receiving more minutes, after the Pistons waived Killian Hayes, and Ivy has had an even better sophomore season, now averaging 15 points, on nearly 45% from the field and 35% from three, as well as nearly four rebounds and four assists. Although defensively, Ivy could use some work. He has now become a very talented scoring guard with a lot of potential, as he continues to develop on the worst team in the NBA. And with the sixth pick, Benedict Matherin, coming out of Arizona, would be selected by the Pacers. He was quickly assigned a bench role, in which he proved to strive in. Matherin averaged nearly 17 points per game, and four rebounds, shooting 43% from the field and 32% from three. As a talented scorer, Matherin would prove to be a key piece for the Pacers, in a time where they lacked team identity, later even making a case for himself as the sixth man of the year. This season's points per game numbers have slightly dropped, but efficiency improved a lot going for 45% from the field and 38% from deep. And he's also on a much improved Pacers team, headlined by Tyrese Halliburton and Pascal Siakam, as they continue to grow as a young team full of potential. As for the seventh pick, the Portland Trailblazers would select the most athletic player of the draft, and potentially of all time, Shaden Sharp, and he proved to be just as electric as expected. Despite currently out with an injury, Sharp's rookie season was great, averaging 10 points and 3 rebounds on very good efficiency of 47% from the field, and 36% from 3. And this season, with Lillard's move to Milwaukee, Sharp naturally took on a bigger guard role, seeing him improve to 16 points per game and 5 rebounds, despite a decline in efficiency. Regardless, with a 49-inch vertical and good scoring skills, he has sky-high potential as a future star. Becoming the first player of the draft to come from the G League, the Aussie Dyson Daniels would be selected 8th overall by the New Orleans Pelicans. Despite being a talented prospect with plenty of upside, it seems like he is still going through a development stage on a talent-filled roster in New Orleans. Currently out with an injury, he's proven to have limited impact on the Pelicans team. With career averages of around 20 minutes, 4.6 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, and 1 steal, he has shown good potential but may need a change of scenery soon. Not saying the Pelicans will trade him, but there's no doubt that seeing him on another roster will give him more opportunity to develop on the court. As for the ninth pick of the draft, the San Antonio Spurs would select forward Jeremy Sohan coming out of Baylor. Sohan, one of the more unconventional players in the league from his appearance to play style, has found some success on the Spurs. Averaging around 11 points in both his first two seasons in the league, this season so far has seen him improve his three-point shooting dramatically, going from around 25% from deep to nearly 34%. Although he still has a lot of work to do as a forward on both ends of the floor, he has a good foundation as a confident young player in the NBA. With the 10th pick of the draft, Johnny Davis was selected by the Wizards, and he may just be the most disappointing player of the draft so far. As a shooting guard, so far in 46 games in his career and 12 minutes a game, he has proved that he can barely shoot, going for just over 23% from deep on the season. Currently receiving limited minutes for Washington, and consistently going scoreless, it'll be no surprise if the Wizards say goodbye to Johnny Davis very soon. As for the first player to be drafted from overseas, Usman Diang, selected 11th overall by the Knicks, has also not seen significant playing time so far. With career averages of 13 minutes per game, scoring under 5 points and 2 rebounds a game, on 42% from the field and 27% from 3, Diang has been average at best, and may need an opportunity outside of the Knicks to strive. And hopefully he can grow to become a good role player very soon. And finally, with the 12th pick of the 2022 NBA Draft, the OKC Thunder would select Jalen Williams with their second pick of the draft. After being selected, it wouldn't be long until he proved to be a great contributor on both ends of the floor. His rookie year saw him average over 14 points per game, over 4 rebounds and nearly 5 assists, also 1 steal, while shooting 52% from the field and nearly 36% from deep. And this season, He's improved on basically every single front, averaging over 19 points per game, 4 rebounds, almost 5 assists, and 1.4 steals. 
over 54% from the field and almost 45% from deep, proving to be one of the main reasons why OKC have gone above and beyond expectations this season. There's no doubt that Jalen Williams is an all-star level player, and a superstar in the making, led by his excellent multi-level scoring and excellent perimeter defense. And although he's currently slightly overshadowed by Shea, only time will tell how special Jalen Williams will be. And that's it for the video. Where do you think Jalen Williams ranks among the top 12 picks of this draft? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Sportsphere, and we'll see you next time.